Manchester Art Fair is back. It's a show made up of work from exhibitors, artists, galleries from all over the UK, but it's got a uniquely northern feel. And that obviously means it's unpretentious. Now today, I come down to Angel Meadow to talk to ace photographer Simon Buckley about his involvement with this year's show. Simon. Hi, Matty. How are you, mate? I'm good. You? Yeah, lovely to see you. Why are we here, though? You've chosen for us to meet here. Why Angel Meadow? Angel Meadow's uh, quite important to me, really. It's where the, uh, the thoughts for Not Quite Light developed. Standing right over there in the light of the co-op tower one evening, I was just looking down at the graves and looking around me, and there's 40,000 people buried beneath our feet here, ridiculously. Oh, mate, keep it yeah, light. Keep it light. You know, they're all dead. They can't hear us. But, um, and it was just basically a little question is if these souls could magically be brought back to life by the light, you know, what would they think of the city that we've created now? You know, would they go, wow, this is amazing, or they go, is this the best you could possibly do, <laughs> given you everything? So that was my sort of thinking around starting to document the changes in the city, and, uh, and it started over there. So, uh, and also I sort of feel this place is like the heartbeat of Manchester's industrial past here is... I don't know, like it's here, it's almost its inception. Yeah. You know, and I find a very haunting place, very beautiful, and it's it's a place very dear to my heart in the city. You say this is where it kind of inspired the Not Quite Light project. Yeah. In case anyone doesn't know, tell us about that project. What is it? So Not Quite Light started just as a little personal project. I had no intentions for it. Big change in my life. I was going through transition. And I just started to take photographs of the city at dawn. Again, a metaphor for transition from the old to the new. Mm -hmm. And I set off, didn't think much of it, and then bit by bit people sort of said, you know, you need to take this a bit more seriously, so I did. So now I just go out in the half light and uh, document the places we exist, looking at the changes around us, and uh, it's, it's become my job. Busy boy. <laughs> Should go for a walk? Evolve or die is what I say. Watch out for the dead bodies. But how important is Manchester to you? I mean, I know a lot of your photos are of Manchester, but how important is this city to, to what you do? I was brought to Bolton at the age of eight, grew up there, and then moved to Manchester straight after college, so I've spent all my adult life living here, so you, easily most of my life. And it gets into your blood after a while, and I keep meeting people who've intended to leave, you know, it's been their temporary place of accommodation yeah. for like 40 years, A and familiar you go, story, and you, yeah. so you ain't going, you know, once you pass five years in Manchester, it, it, it sticks to you and you begin to realise that outside of Manchester, where else in the UK would you shift to? I often refer to Manchester as like my difficult teenager <laughs> in that um, it annoys the hell out of me, you know, and uh, it really pisses me off sometimes. And then it will do something absolutely amazing and you think, God, I love you. And I think that's my relationship with the city is that it quite often really irritates me, but I can't help but love it. and. Um, it constantly astonishes me. So, we just have to duck underneath this archway because there is a bit of a rainstorm coming. <laughs> Let's see where you're going with this, Matt. Don't pretend to laugh, Simon. Hey. One of your most well-known pieces you of art. You were working on that last night. Oh, it took me ages. I was writing it out, going, fingers crossed it rains. Rainstorm's uh, one of your most well-known pieces, I think. It is, yeah. Is that fair to say? Uh, the most well-known, I would, I would suggest. Okay, cool. I think, yeah. Uh, if anyone hasn't seen it, we'll put a picture of it up, but just describe it for me. What was it? Um, <laughs> it's difficult for me to describe it, I suppose, but people said, oh, it was a modern-day Lowry, and other people said it was more like a ballet. It was a photograph looking towards some light coming through a huge rainstorm and there were silhouetted figures, you know, behaving as they do at rush hour kind of thing, so it all came together. It was a very surreal couple of hours and then subsequent time, I mean, I was on Castlefield Station going to film for an architect and the rain came down as only it can, it seems, in this city and <laughs> yeah. I was looking to my left and I was thinking, God, it's, it's a bit beautiful though, isn't it, you know, and the rain was bouncing off the platforms and I thought oh sod it and uh, ran out onto uh, onto the, the bridge over the uh, the road and took six frames before my phone stopped working because the rain spattering against it. Was it I just was on your phone? On my iPhone, on iPhone 6 yeah and uh, came back on the platform people were smirking at me because I was so drenched. I did a bit of puffing around with it and then uh, put it on Twitter and forgot about it. I nearly didn't post it 
because I was a bit irritated with a bit of the movement and composition. Thought a bit of a cliche, thanks to the rain. Anyway, half an hour later, I went back on Twitter and it got absolutely mental. Crazy, mate. And, uh, and it has been like having a mini hit single. It's been <laughs> kind of quite life changing, really. And as ever, it's a bit like, you know, my musical hero, Gary Newman, you know, it's been like asked to do cars. People go, yeah, whatever, just, just show us Rainstorm. Tell us about you know. Rainstorm. Yeah, exactly that. I understand why it was popular. I think it seemed to evoke something in people's hearts and minds about how they wanted to see Manchester, not how it necessarily actually is anymore. Because I, I do understand the point about it being a sort of cliche in a way. And now, ironically, I couldn't take the photograph because of the building work that's gone on to the left of it. Oh. Uh, Castlefield, it's, it, oh, would, of course. it would change the rhythm of it. It would be a kind of a really big blockage in terms of how the picture looked. So I think what it does is it evokes what people want to feel about their own city. It's sold around the world and a lot of it to ex-Manx who've gone abroad and yeah. it's how they'd like to remember the city. Home. So I think I sort of stand for something sort of quite traditional and conservative with that picture, you know, and I, I, one of the reasons I've sort of struggled with it a little bit is because I'm documenting change and transition and what Rainstorm is is the sort of picture I would have taken perhaps in the 90s when I was doing documentary work for magazines you know when I was doing stuff for The Guardian and Saturday Telegraph it's not necessarily the kind of picture I would do now you know I don't really include people in my pictures you know because uh, my knees have gone for a start I can't chase them but <laughs> I like to look at streets empty I like to give yeah. buildings their say in the in the change of the city you know so I've got a very odd relationship with the photograph you know it's it's successful it's part of my uh, business model now as it is I'm having jigsaws made and what stuff, stop you know? going on about it <laughs> but yeah um, <laughs> but I also feel a certain disconnection from it because of what I do at dawn you know which is a very different thing it really provoked quite a lot of questions around the ideas of fame and being well known and all of that you know and I'm quite happy to disappear back into the shadows actually and and to not be seen <laughs> So the Manchester Art Fair, very yeah. soon. It is, um, yeah. It's an important thing for the city, isn't it? It's good that we've got it. Increasingly, I mean, it's been uh, amazing to see it grow over the years, hasn't it? From a kind of a small event and the, you know, the en energy and enthusiasm of Tom Hetherington to build up to what it is and, you know, everybody in his team. It's, it's quite astonishing to see it happen each year now and fill a space the size of Manchester Central. Exactly, but there's a wealth of talent as well, isn't there? There's enough people around the North West to it, pack it in. Absolutely, you know, I think that's one of the great things about the vision of Manchester Art Fair is it celebrates that great energy art artistically and creatively, uh, creatively within the city. It's because of things like the Art Fair that people don't need to go to London now to be successful as an artist. There's outlets here, there are places for them to show their work and to be recognised and celebrated. And, that makes Manchester an international city in its own right. It doesn't need anywhere else because it's got everything it needs here. I agree with absolutely everything you just said. Um, you're doing something special for the show though, aren't you, this year? Yeah, I'm gonna do a, a one-off picture. I'm gonna go out at dawn or dusk and take a picture. Um, and then we're gonna offer that as a limited edition print during the, uh, the art fair. Amazing. So, yeah. Well, listen, can't wait to see it. Thank you for talking to me. Yeah. I'm gonna leave you. You're gonna take some photos and do a bit of recording while you're here, aren't um, you? Yeah. So I'll get out of your way. because. I mean, you should take some photos of me one day soon, but not now. See you later, Mum. You move too fast, you're not a building. <laughs>this year sounds like it's going to be amazing. If you want to be a part of it, if you want to go to Manchester's Art Fair, it's on the 4th, 5th and 6th of November. All you've got to do is click the link below. It's that simple. Oh